Hello and welcome everyone to my Commander deck tech on Daxos, Blessed by the Sun. This is a mono white life gain deck that aims to take full advantage of the life gain mechanic in a myriad of ways. This deck is meant to be played in a 4 player casual commander meta. So why should you use Daxos, Blessed by the Sun? To answer that question, I have to go into the backstory of how I came to the conclusion of using Daxos as my life gain commander. It's actually been a few years since I made a casual deck. The majority of playable commanders that have been printed in that time have simply been too powerful for a casual commander, so I've struggled making a solid casual deck. On a side note, the commanders in 2021 were actually a really nice power level, and have been scaled down when compared to the overpowered commanders printed in the last couple years. I was playing some Magic Arena at the beginning of 2022 and I was having a good time piloting a mono white life gain deck. I realized how fun the new life gain cards were, so I decided to see if I could make a life gain deck for Commander. I've tried making a life gain deck in the past using a Loro, but it always turned more into a control deck than a life gain deck, mostly because the Esper color combination is more geared towards a control strategy. I wanted to make a pure life gain deck. So I knew Alora was not the way to go. I went to EDH Rec to look up some life gain decks, and I was actually pretty disappointed by the selection. The only commander that stood out to me was Karlov of the Ghost Council. However, someone in my playgroup already had a Karlov deck, so he was out of the question. Trollasara Moon Dancer was another commander that piqued my interest, so I decided to try to build her. After creating a deck list for her, I ended up having about 250 cards, and after hours of cutting I could only get to about 200 cards, far from the 100 required for a commander deck. I decided that green and white simply had too many options, and the majority of the cards were white, so I decided to look if there was any solid mono white life gain commanders instead. The first one I found was Heliod Suncrowned, which is a CDH walking ballista combo deck, which is obviously what we're not looking for. I scrolled a little further down and found Daxos. He wasn't even under the life gain decks on EDH rec for some reason, but he was perfect for what I was looking for. At first I was skeptical about playing a mono white deck since they've been nearly unplayable for as long as I've been playing commander. In 2021 white was given a lot of tools to actually make a mono white deck playable, which has really encouraged me to make the deck since I don't have to worry about spending hundreds of dollars on a mana base. Even just being one color, it was still really difficult to get down to 100 cards for this deck. I managed to get to about 120 cards and had to start cutting things I absolutely did not want to cut, but I had to find some excuse to cut cards. One of the things I did to cut cards was really focus on getting my average CMC down as low as I could. I wanted to focus on curving out rather than ramping out. Daxos doesn't have any card advantage on him, and he's a low drop. So ramp is a lot less powerful in the deck, since you'd likely ramp into nothing and dump your hand out and be top decking too quickly. I was a little skeptical about not having much ramp in the deck. However, the strategy has worked out pretty well as long as I hit my cards on curve. Mono white ramp is so mediocre too that it just wouldn't be as powerful as ramp in other colors. Let's go over the cards that I'm running in the deck. Gaining life is a whole point of the deck, so how are the ways that we gain life in the deck? Daxos Blessed by the Sun gains us a life each time a creature enters the battlefield under our control or when a creature we control dies. Because of how Daxos works, the deck is more based on life gain triggers rather than the amount of life gained. For instance, we would rather gain 3 life and 3 1 life triggers rather than 3 life at one time to get as many life gain triggers as possible. The deck is more based on the enters the battlefield part of Daxos' ability rather than the dies part. I treat that part of his ability as a nice bonus. Another bonus is his toughness, which makes him an amazing blocker, which really helps to keep our life total high. Soul Warden and Soul's Attendant are the quintessential life gain cards, and are also known as the Soul Sisters. These two are still the best version of this effect since they only cost 1 mana and activate whenever any creature enters the battlefield, which includes your opponent's creatures. If one of these two were legendary, I'd run them as the commander instead, but Daxos does a pretty good impression of them. Impassion Orator is a much worse version of Daxos. However, we need as many of these effects in the deck as possible, so this card still makes the cut. 
Unark Veteran only triggers on creatures entering the battlefield on our side, making it worse than the Soul Sisters. However, it does have the Disturb ability, giving it some extra utility. Aryok Champion might be better than the Soul Sisters. The pro black and red is really good, and makes this thing a great blocker. I'm always surprised how solid protection from colors is in Commander. It seems to always be relevant. I'm always surprised how much damage Sutcher Priest ends up doing. It's a card people really don't want to waste their removal on, meaning it usually sticks around for a while. This thing usually will do at least 10 damage total between all your opponents. It really just depends if your opponents are playing a creature heavy deck or not. Righteous Valkyrie only triggers on Angels and Clerics, which there are 14 of in the deck. However, instead of just gaining one life, you gain life equal to creature's toughness, which is a nice little bonus to make up for the fact that it doesn't trigger whenever any creature ETBs on our side. Angel of Destiny can gain you an absurd amount of life, usually getting you to that 55 life threshold pretty easily. It basically prevents the damage that you're doing to your opponents by having them gain a life. However, if you kill them with the attack, the trigger for them to gain life will never resolve and they will still die. The downside has almost never been relevant when I played the card, because this card's lose the game trigger and ends up killing them anyways. However, this thing is an absolute removal magnet, so be smart when you play it. This is a creature heavy deck, and we should be attacking a lot, so Linden the Steadfast Queen should be triggering pretty often. The important thing to note with her is that she has a trigger for each white creature you attack with, which is exactly what we need to synergize with the rest of the deck. Sun Scorch Regent is great for multiplayer and will get gigantic very quickly, which is especially good for a flyer. He'll also be giving us plenty of life gain triggers. He's a great gigantic threat that your opponents have to answer, and he's only 5 mana. Leonin War Leader creates two tokens on attack, which triggers Daxos or the other myriad of creatures entering play life gain effects. The tokens that he creates are attacking and have lifelink, which will give us two life gain triggers when they do damage. This thing was an absolute powerhouse in my standard life gain deck, and it's great in this deck too. Heliod's Sun Crown is easily the best card in the deck. He gives us a great life gain payoff and is able to give our creatures lifelink. He also combos off with Walking Ballista, giving the deck a much needed alternate win condition. Here are some creatures with lifelink that I run in the deck. A Johnny Strength of the Pride's plus one will give us a nice chunk of life and feeds into his other two loyalty abilities. Aetherflux Reservoir gains us life every time we cast a spell equal to our storm count. Cosmos Elixir will gain us two life at our end step if we have less life than our starting life total. Authority of the Councils gains us a life every time a creature enters the battlefield on our opponent's control. And they will enter tapped, making blocking difficult for our opponents. Dawn of Hope creates a token with lifelink. Although 4 mana is kind of steep, so I'd only use this if you're mana flooded or really desperate for something to do. Legion's Landing gives us a token with lifelink. Fumigate gains us a life for each creature destroyed when you wipe the board with a card. Cleric class gains us one additional life whenever we gain life, and at level 3 will gain us life equal to the toughness of the creature that we choose to return to the battlefield from our graveyard. Well, we are gaining all this life, so what the heck do we do with all that life gain? You don't win magic by increasing your life total, you win by getting your opponent's life total to zero. A Johnny's Pride Mate gets a plus one plus one counter whenever we gain life. This guy will get gigantic really quickly, and will start eating up chump blockers, removal, or your opponent's life totals. Voice of the Blessed is an upgrade to Johnny's Pride Mate, and becomes nearly impossible to deal with really quickly. It turns out an indestructible 12-12 of flying and vigilance is pretty freaking good. Twin Blade Paladin is a 4 mana Johnny's Pride Mate with double strike, so it can do an insane amount of damage really quickly. Your opponents cannot allow this thing to hit them. Ajani's Strength of the Pride's minus 2 loyalty ability creates an Ajani's Pride Mate. Archangel of Thune puts a 1 1 counter on each of your creatures whenever you gain life. This thing will make your entire board of creatures, including your small utility creatures, into absolute powerhouses. 
Heliod Sun Crown puts a 1 1 counter on a creature or enchantment whenever you gain life. Cleric class at level 2 will act just like Heliod, allowing you to put a 1 1 counter on any creature you control whenever you gain life. Crested Sun Mirror gets us a 5 5 horse token on each end step if we gain any life. That's right, any end step, which includes your opponents. Meaning once you play this guy and can get it back around to your turn, you will have three indestructible horsey tokens ready to do some damage, with more on the way. Getting to 55 life shouldn't be a big deal for this deck. Then you can start taking people out of the game with Angel of Destiny. We need to get to 47 life for Righteous Valkyrie to start pumping up the team by plus 2 plus 2, which even turns our 1-1s into relevant combat threats. We need 47 life for Speaker of the Heavens to start pooping out 4-4 Angels for the low cost of just tapping him. We need to be at 40 life at our upkeep to win with Felidar Sovereign. We need to be at least 50 life on our upkeep to win with Test of Endurance. We need to be at more than 50 life to pay for Aether Flux to start doing 50 damage to our opponents. Well of Lost Dreams lets us draw cards whenever we gain life. This thing is an absolute beast at drawing us cards. It'll feel like you're playing a blue deck with the amount of card draw this thing produces. Dawn of Hope lets us draw a card every time we gain life for 2 mana, which is a perfectly reasonable cost, especially for a mono white deck that's desperate for card draw. We're playing mono white, so we need to dig deep for some solid card draw effects. Luckily, 2021 brought some good white card draw spells that really help make mono white decks more consistent. There are also some solid card draw effects based on life gain available for mono white, which really helps. Esper Sentinel is white mystic remore, and almost just as good. Getting this thing down turn 1 will usually enable us to draw a decent chunk of cards. Even if it's just 2, you just got yourself a 1 mana divination. We do have a couple ways of powering him up too making its tax on your opponent's spells much less reasonable to pay. Mangara the Diplomat will draw us cards pretty often, especially later in the game when your opponents have enough mana to try to string multiple cards together in the same turn. His first ability really discourages your opponents from attacking you with more than one creature, which is great for preserving your life total. We have a lot of low power creatures in the deck, so Mentor of the Meek should be triggering pretty often, and the 1 mana cost is perfectly reasonable. The deck is desperate for card draw, so I'd encourage you to play out your hands so you can get as many draw triggers as you can with this guy, even if that means you aren't playing as many creatures as you could be in one turn. Welcoming Vampire works just like Mentor the Meek, but without the 1 mana payment, and only triggers once per turn, which is perfectly reasonable. This is another solid card draw effect coming out of 2021 for mono white decks. It will usually be above 40 life, so Cosmos Elixir drawing us a card at each of our end steps is really solid. Drawing a card at the end step is a little awkward, however we need any sort of efficient card draw we can get our hands on. Endless Atlas is one of the most efficient ways monocolor decks have to draw. The only problem with it is you are forced to play a lot of basics in the deck, which you probably should be doing anyways, but I know some people want to jam a ton of utility lands in their monocolor decks, and this card is much less useful for them. Well of Lost Dreams is probably the best card draw engine in the deck. It won't even feel like you're playing a mono white deck when this thing is out. Dawn of Hope allows you to pay 2 mana to draw a card whenever you gain life, which is a really efficient amount. War Room belongs in just about every mono colored deck. Having the ability to draw a card for a reasonable price attached to a land is so solid because of the low opportunity cost of the card just taking up a land slot in the deck. Mono White has never been known for its ramp. That is one reason I really focused on getting the average CMC as low as possible, so I didn't have to rely on mediocre ramp for the deck to function properly. I still ended up putting some in the deck because you need at least a little in Commander. Keeper of the Accord helps us keep up with the other players, especially those that are ramping using land. You can also make Soldier Tokens, which are great for triggering Soul Sister life gain effects. Knight of the White Orchid and Loyal Warhound search for a planes if an opponent has more lands than you, which is really easy to trigger turn 2 if you didn't go first. 
Weathered Wayfarer isn't technically ramp, but allows us to make consistent land drops, which can often be just as powerful. It can also grab any land, not just basics. Archaeomancer's map is very similar to burgeoning. It's not quite as good, but it's an effect that is incredibly useful for Mono White deck. It's yet another powerful card for Mono White coming out of 2021. Land Tax is an auto-include for any deck running white, and pairs well with Archaeomancer's map. The corresponding medallions are auto-includes for any monocolored deck. Expect maybe mono green. They're basically better than the two CMC mana rocks in many ways. Arcane Signet is an auto-include for any non-green deck. It's the only two CMC mana rock I run in the deck, since monocolored decks don't have access to good CMC rocks like the Talismans and the Signets. Felwar Stone isn't good in the deck either, since the deck is very heavily white, and white isn't a very popular color, so there's a decent chance that none of your opponents are playing white. Again, the deck is heavily white, so the colors 2 CMC rocks aren't helpful either. Plus, our commander is 2 mana, so 2 CMC rocks aren't going to help ramp into him either. It would just replace him as our turn 2 play. Soul Ring. It's commander. Play this. Even in this deck, where colorless mana isn't very useful, you still play Soul Ring, okay? Okay. Legion's Landing is easy to flip, which turns into a land. Smothering Tithe is another easy auto-include. The more I play with this card, the more busted I think it is. And that's when you're playing with it fairly. Once you start adding wheels or other weird effects, this card can become broken. Nykthil Shrine and Nyx is an auto-include in any monocolor deck, especially this one that has a lot of white mana pips on the permanents. Terrain Generator is a great card for any monocolor deck running a lot of basics. And it has a low opportunity cost since its effect is attached to a land. This is definitely a proactive deck rather than a reactive deck, so I only put in the most basic of removal packages just to deal with the most dangerous of threats. A Johnny's Strength of the Pride Zero Loyalty ability is a one sided exile effect for creatures and artifacts, which makes Cyclonic Rift look bad. Just an amazing effect that really sets you up to win the game. Austere Command is a solid board wipe effect that sometimes allows you to dodge the effect depending on the board state. Dismantling Wave is a solid artifact and enchantment removal spell. It becomes an auto-include for any deck running white. It has completely replaced Return to Dust as the default white artifact and enchantment removal spell. Fumigate is a board wipe that also gains us life. Vanquish the Horde is White Blasphemous Act. And it's just as much of an auto-include. Generous Gift is an auto-include for any deck running white. Path to Exile and Swords to Plowshares are more easy auto-includes. They are still the most efficient removal spells in the game. Our board is going to be filled with creatures, and we need ways to protect them from removal and board wipes. Mother of Runes is an incredibly efficient protection creature that works great for defense and offense. It can give a creature you control to have protection from blockers and opponent controls and swing in for damage. Selfless Spirit gives our creatures indestructible, making it so your opponents have to answer this guy first if they want to wipe the board. Flawless Maneuver gives our board indestructible and is much more unpredictable, making your opponents more susceptible into playing into it. Teferi's Protection protects us and our entire board. And it's basically become an auto-include for any deck running white that wants to protect their board even slightly. White really isn't known for its tutors, but I was able to fit a decent little chunk of them in the deck. Ranger of Eos lets us search for two 1 CMC or less creatures, which is a good chunk of creatures in the deck. You probably want to grab Sarah Ascendant as one of the creatures, just because a 6-6 flyer with lifelink for one man is pretty freaking good. Ranger Captain of EO searches for only one 1 CMC or less creature. However, it costs one less mana and has a solid ability to prevent your opponents from casting spells, which is great for protecting you when you want to combo off, and also great for preventing your opponents from comboing off for a turn. Recruiter of the Guard tutors up a creature card with toughness 2 or less, which are a decent chunk of the cards in the deck. 
Weathered Wayfarer tutors up any land. Idyllic tutor tutors up enchantments, which will likely be Heliod Sun Crown. But there are also other great tutor targets too. Enlightened tutor is an auto include for any deck running white. These are cards that didn't fall under any of the previous categories. Sun Titan is great for recurring our low CMC permanents and creates value through recursion rather than card draw. He's still a solid creature, even though it's been years since he was first printed. Walking Ballista is in the deck just because it combos with Heliod. I'm not the type of player that just puts Videlkin Orrery in every deck. 4 mana for a card that doesn't have an immediate effect on the board just isn't very exciting to me. The real reason it's in the deck is to flash in Felidar Sovereign or Test of Endurance on your last opponent's end step to give them as little chance to interact with those cards as possible so you can easily get to your upkeep and win the game. These are the lands that I'm using in the deck. Emergence Zone has the same functionality as Videlkin Ori, although it's just a one-time effect. But as a benefit, this effect is attached to a land. I hate ECB tapped lands. However, the Mirror of the Sky Ruin is just so powerful awakening for recurring creatures, right when we need the effect the most, since we're probably running low on cards in hand too at that point in the game. Your devotion to white should be pretty high, so Nyxo should be netting you a decent chunk of mana when it's activated. Rogue's Passage lets you sneak in your massive plus one plus one counter creatures for some serious damage. Brain Generator lets us ramp our basics into play. War Room lets us draw a card for a reasonable price. I run 30 planes in the deck, which is a lot of basics, but I need a lot of basics for the many plane synergies in the deck and for protection against non-basic land hate. There are three main ways the deck wins. The first is creature beatdown, especially with powered up creatures like a Johnny's Pride Mate. This strategy is mostly used to put pressure on our opponents, since it's so hard to kill all of your opponents with combat damage alone. 120 life is a lot, even for creatures that are powered up. Creatures are also so susceptible to removal that I never expect them to stay around long, especially if they start becoming threats. You have to be smart about how much you commit to the board. You don't want one board wipe to take you out of the game because you foolishly dumped your whole hand out and don't have a good way to draw cards to recover. You want this strategy to seem like your main way to win, but it's really there just to put pressure on your opponents while you gain life for your second strategy. The second way to win are the life gain win conditions. Those being Felidar Sovereign, Test of Endurance, Aetherflux Reservoir, and Angel of Destiny. These are the cards that we can use to win off all the life gain in the deck. The life gain doesn't only power up our creatures, but it also sets us up to win the game with these effects. These cards will sneak us in for a win while our opponents are busy dealing with our other threats. The third way to win is the Heliod, Suncrown, and Walking Ballista combo. I put this in the deck just because Heliod went in the deck, so I figured adding Walking Ballista wouldn't hurt the deck much, since it combos off, but has nothing to do with the rest of the deck. Okay, now I'll go into detail about how the combo works and how to execute it. First, you need to have Heliod on the battlefield and Walking Ballista in your hand. Second, cast Walking Ballista for 4 mana. You can actually do this for 2 mana if you have a Soul Sister effect on the battlefield, since Heliod can give Walking Ballista 1-1 one, one counter when it enters, since you gain 1 life when it enters the battlefield. Just know, the important thing is that you need at least 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on Walking Ballista. Third, pay 2 mana for Heliod's activated ability giving Walking Ballista lifelink. Fourth, remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter to do 1 damage to an opponent. Fifth, this triggers Heliod because Walking Ballista has lifelink, so you can put a 1-1 one -one counter back on Walking Ballista. Sixth, you can repeat steps 4 and 5 an infinite amount of times to kill off all your opponents. This combo costs 9 mana total if you don't have Heliod out, and 7 if you have a Soul Sister effect in play. You're likely to play Walking Ballista when Heliod's already been out, so this combo will often cost only 4 mana, since we have so many Soul Sister effects in the deck too. 
Ideal Tutor and Enlightened Tutor are able to tutor up Heliod for this combo. Ranger of Eos, Ranger Captain of Eos, Recruiter of the Guard, and Enlightened Tutor are able to tutor up Walking Ballista. I want to thank you for watching my deck tech on Daxos Blessed by the Sun. I'd appreciate it if you smack that like button and comment about how great of a deck builder I am, because that's obvious by now. And make sure to subscribe so I can insert some more Magic the Gathering deck knowledge in your brain. And thank you for watching.